Hello again, everyone. Welcome to On Silver Screen, where learning is interesting. This is your host, Silver De La Rosa, and today we will be having our season finale for quantification and costing of construction works. We will end this season with a discussion on cost planning. On this episode, we will talk about the terms used in cost planning and define the characteristics of a cost plan, including discussions on the importance of cost plan. We will also talk about the methods used in cost planning, such as the comparative cost plan and elemental cost plan. We will also talk about cost planning in work stages. And in this discussion, we are going to use the Royal Institute of British Architects Plan of Works 2020. Let us begin by defining what is cost planning. Cost planning is defined as the critical breakdown of cost limit into cost targets for each element of the project. It provides a statement on how the design team proposes to distribute the available budget among the elements of the building. Here we have several terms. We have cost limits and cost targets. Another term we have to understand is cost estimating. And we have to remember that cost estimating is not equal to cost planning. Why? Because cost estimating is the process of forecasting the amount of money needed to complete a project within a defined scope, while cost planning is the distribution of this estimated amount of money. So there is a difference between the two terms. Cost target is the recommended total expenditure for an element. So it is only for an element. It is the recommended total expenditure. While cost limit is the authorized budget or the approved estimate. It is the maximum expenditure that the employer is prepared to make in relation to the completed building. Now we have another term here, budget. Budget is the total estimated cost needed to complete a project over a defined scope and period of time. If you wanted to know more about budget, you can visit my previous video that is Season 1, Episode 2 of Quantification and Costing of Works, where I talk about cost estimating techniques. Now let us define cost analysis. Cost analysis is the examination of distribution of cost across the construction elements of a project for the purpose of providing data that allows comparison to be made between the cost of achieving various building functions in a project with those of achieving equivalent functions in other projects. So when you say cost analysis, you're taking the cost of the previous projects, the same elements of a pre previous project and compare it to the elements of your current project, provided that these elements have similar functions in order for you to determine whether the cost of the elements of this new project is reasonable or not. So that is what do you mean when you say cost analysis? Cost control. Cost control is the process of planning and controlling the cost of buildings or construction project as a whole, and it takes place throughout the complete duration of the construction project. So cost control will start from the time where you already have your approved budget all the way throughout the completion of your construction project. We will demonstrate the extent of cost control in the succeeding slides. Cost checks. Cost checks is the process of evaluating the design as it develops in terms of cost targets. So if you remember in our previous video, we are talking about the different design stages. So every stages, when there is a new design development, you are going to assess the cost of this new design development with respect to your cost target. So that activity is called cost check. Now let us talk about the characteristics of a cost plan. A cost plan needs to be managed and updated throughout the design development stage. We've been talking about the design development stage. If you want to know more about the design development stage, you can visit my previous video, the season one, episode one for our quantification and costing of construction work series, where 
I talk about the basic essentials needed for you to quantify and cost a project. On that video, I talked about the different design development stage. The next characteristics of a cost plan is that if the design and construction stages overlap, the cost planning may also run into construction stage. So there is a possibility that your design and construction will overlap depending on the procurement route that you want to undertake. And I will talk more about the procurement route in my next season, where I will discuss about the procurement and tendering processes. If you want to know more, please watch out for that video. The next characteristic is that it developed a higher detail of accuracy as more information becomes available in every stage of the project. Now, why is it that a cost plan is important? It is important because a cost plan provides a basis for which employers and developers can ensure that they are provided with value for their money. One important aspect that clients, developers, or paymaster in any case are looking at is that they are being afforded with the best value for what they are spending. So cost plan can do that particular function. And it is also used to control the estimated cost during the design and construction phases of the project. So it means that wherever you are at a phase of the project or at any phase of the project, you can always refer to your cost plan as your check and balance or your cost control tool to see whether you are spending beyond what is uh, approved or not. Also, cost plan provide an advice to designer that enables them to arrive at practical and balanced designs within budget. So as early as the design stage of the project, cost plan can already be used as your cost control tool in order for the designers to make sure that their design proposals or the changes in the designs that they want to implement will not go beyond the approved budget. Cost plan can provide an information upon which the employer can make informed decisions. And it is also used to identify, assess, and determine value engineering opportunities. And it is also used as a benchmark for analysis of tender returns. So you have your cost plan, you have your cost distribution among the elements. So from there, you can check whether the tender returns exceeded what is approved. And from there, you can make necessary adjustment. So that is how important a cost plan is. Let us now talk about the methods used in cost planning. There are several methods used to prepare a cost plan. But in this discussion, we are going to talk about two of the commonly used method to prepare a cost plan. The first one is comparative cost planning. This is also known as costing a design. Comparative cost planning assumes that initial cost advice during the early stage have determined the general layout of the project with respect to its recommended cost limit. The cost target for each element are not fixed. Design alternatives are open for the designer to choose and the consequential effect of each alternative to other elements will be analyzed as a whole. And the designer has the flexibility to choose the design combinations as long as the combined cost of all elements will not exceed the project cost limit. So in comparative cost planning, the designer is free to choose the design alternative and the design combinations. So once a design alternative is being proposed by the designer, the QS will then estimate the total cost of this design and compare it to the cost limit. That is why it is called costing a design. The next commonly used method in cost planning is elemental cost planning. This is also known as designing to cost. In elemental cost planning, the cost limit for the project is allocated to major elements through the application of various cost estimating techniques. And the cost target are fixed and each element are considered as cost center. Nevertheless, money can still be transferred between elements when necessary, provided you observe the proper cost control procedures. And the alternative design for each element is treated separately, provided that the cost impact will not exceed the cost target for a particular element. So in elemental cost planning, the designer is being restrained by the cost limit. 
he must see to it that the design alternatives will not exceed or go beyond the cost target. That is why it is called designing to cost. To better understand how these methods of cost planning works, let's take a look at the following illustrations. First, we're going to talk about the comparative cost planning. Let's say that we have these elements in our project. We have the structure, facade, interior finishes, mechanical and electrical. Do note that for comparative cost planning, the cost target is not fixed. What we have is the cost estimate for the design options. Let's say that the design option initially provided by the designer was estimated and the cost is 30 million for the structure, 25 million for facade, 35 million for interior finishes, and 30 million for mechanical and electrical. The total cost for this design option is 120 million. And supposing this design option was accepted by the client, so this 120 million will now become your cost limit. Now the question is, what happens if there is a change in design? So supposing the designer proposed a change in facade design, and then this, this proposal was estimated, and now the estimated cost for facade is 35 million. For comparative cost planning, the consequential impact of this change in design will be analyzed for each element. Now it was analyzed that the, design, the change in design for, of the facade will affect the structure and the structure cost is now estimated to be at 35 million. And supposing it don't have any effect on interior finishes and mechanical and electrical. So the cost for these two elements remains the same. But the total cost of the entire project will now become 135 million. So this new estimated cost will be compared to your cost limit of 120 million. Now that the total cost of the proposal of the design option exceeds the cost limit, so the architect or the designer will again revisit the design and carry out the same procedure. Propose a design, estimate the cost of the design, analyze the cost impact of this design to each element, and then compare the total cost to your cost limit. So that's how a comparative cost planning works. So if you see, the designer is not bound or is not uh, restricted by the cost of each and individual element, but the total cost limit. That is why it is being called cost costing a design, because the designer proposes a design, you estimate the cost of this design. So it is costing a design. Now let's talk about elemental cost planning. Supposing we have the same elements, structure, facade, interior finishes, mechanical and electrical elements. Do note that for elemental cost planning, the cost target is fixed. So let's take it that we have a cost target of 30 million for structure, $25 million for facade, $35 million for interior finishes and mechanical and electrical elements will have a cost target of $30 million. And let's say that our cost limit is $120 million. The question is, what will happen if there are changes in these elements? So for elemental cost planning, the designer is constrained by the cost target. So whatever design options that the designer will propose, he must see to it that the cost of this design will be less than or equal to the cost target. That is why it is called designing to cost because the designer will have to fit its design options to the agreed cost or to the cost target. Let us now talk about cost planning in work stages. Where does cost planning sits in construction work stages? And in this presentation, we are going to use the RIBA work stages or RIBA plan of work 2020. RIBA stands for the Royal Institute of British Architects. And according to RIBA, the following are the work stages. Stage zero, strategic definition. Stage one, preparation and briefing. Stage two, concept design. Stage three, spatial coordination. Stage four, technical design. Stage five, manufacturing and construction. Stage six, handover. And stage seven, use of the project. 
different organization may have different categories of work stages. But in general, work stages can be categorized as redesign, design or design development, construction. In RIBA, it is being called manufacturing and construction due to the recent development in construction technology like the DFMA or Design for Manufacturing and Assembly. It is a construction process wherein parts of the building element are being manufactured off-site and then it will be brought to site for assembly. Nevertheless, it is still part of the construction process. The next category is handover of the completed project and in use of the project. Now, where does cost planning sits in these stages? During the strategic definition stage, a quantity surveyor may be requested to prepare a rough order of magnitude estimate. It will be used as an initial project budget as part of business case presentation. Supposing the business case was approved, it will now proceed to the next stage, preparation and briefing. In this stage, the ROM will be tested against the feasibility. And once the project is proven to be feasible, the client may now provide briefing to the project team and agree with a project budget. Hence, you can already establish your cost limit. And once the design uh, is already evolving, during the concept design stage, once the designer had given its parameters of the design, you can also establish your initial formal cost plan. Do note that a cost plan only represents the anticipated cost of the building. As such, it represents only a portion of the project budget. During the development of design, you also have to perform cost checks. This is to ensure that the developed design is still within the agreed cost targets. As the design evolves to its technical detail, your cost plan will also be updated. And your updated formal cost plan or your updated final cost plan will now become your pre-tender estimate. It is where your tender returns will be analyzed and compared against. So from the start of establishment of cost limit up to the time that you are evaluating the tender and awarding the works to the contractor, it is where the cost planning procedures is being applied. And during construction until handover stage, you are going to perform cost analysis to make sure that any changes in the project will still be within your cost target. And depending on your project brief, from the establishment of cost limit up to the end of the life cycle of the building or the project, you will carry out your cost control procedures. This is where cost planning, cost analysis, and cost control procedures sits within the work stages. Join me next week as we start our season two and discuss about procurement and tendering. Please don't forget to like the video, share, and subscribe to my channel. You can also turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified once the new video is uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next season.